Hello friends! In today's episode we make this tenon jig. Let's get started! Alright, so for materials today, all that I'm going to be using is this recycled door. Now this door is actual plywood. I think it's uh, seven ply based off of some other projects that I've done previously. I'm going to take off the hardware and save it for another time. And this is going to be a tenon jig that goes over my fence. So here's the basic principle. Using some scrap. I'm sure you can see this. Going to be a board on the opposite side of my fence. A board that's going to sit over the fence. It's going to be the exact width of the fence. And then a big board right here. And this board is what's... Oh! It's going to do better than that. This board here is where uh, the board that you're cutting a tenon on is going to ride. And there's going to be some supports and a sacrificial board and um, it's, it's going to be pretty smooth. So let's get cutting. Special thanks to RZ Industries for sponsoring this video and for keeping my airways clean. For more information on the masks that I'm wearing in this video, check out the link in the description below. Alright, hello weirdest of all camera angles. Here we have all these pieces cut, let's take a look how they're going to stand. This one I measured just a sixteenth of an inch lower than the rail here. You can see when I put a board across, it doesn't exactly touch. I did that because this is going to screw into the board that goes across the top and I don't want any sort of friction on the main piece. So that's going to go over here. Then I've got a board that's just a hair bit wider than this dimension here. And this is going to go up flush to the inside here. And you see we're going to be screwing down like so. And then the board, now notice all these are going the same grain. The main board will go on the inside, like so. Oh, hello, like so. Um, before I get any comments, yes, I'll be getting a lapel mic eventually. Um, you see the big board's going up like this. You can see that's going to be fine. We are going to have right here a small board that is sacrificial, uh, like this. Pardon me. And another board that'll go just on top of it like so. Um, I haven't cut it to the top length, but that's okay. And the board that we're going to be cutting is going to go right along in front of this. So these will have to be perfectly on top of each other. Eventually, this sacrificial piece, I made it just taller than the maximum height of my blade. So I made it about three and a half inches. You can, in time, throw this away and make some more out of MDF or more plywood or whatever you have on hand if it gets gross. 
then I found a pushing handle and I might actually put two of them on here just as a design aspect but as I'm going along this is what I'll be pushing for the whole device. And there you have it. This project was really actually very easy to do. I thought I was going to glue up the entire thing, but it turns out I ended up just using fastener as my star bit screws for most of it. Um, I'm pleased that I ended up doing the plywood. This was five ply instead of seven ply. I think it's just fine. You'll notice um, this piece, the top piece, and the back piece, the grain is all going in this direction, so I applied some grain going in this direction with the other plywood, but of course, you know, plywood goes like this. So I don't know if that necessarily makes a difference. Maybe if you're making this out of hardwood, that would be more important. But I thought, well, maybe that'll add just a little bit of structural integrity. Who knows? Um, to tell you the truth, when I make most of my tenons, I ended up, I end up using my dado stack and I just hog the material out. But usually I'm making a whole bunch of tenons, so it makes sense just to put my dado stack on and take care of it that way. But I can see this coming in really handy for those times when I just have to make one or two and it doesn't pay for me to change up my dado stack and get ready for um, that kind of a setup. Um, something I did off camera, I ended up waxing the space right in between here and that helps it go along the fence really nice. I made it nice and tight on purpose because I wanted this to stand perfectly 90 degrees with respect to the table saw um, or table surface and I'm pleased that I did. So. I think it turned out really well. What do you do for tenons? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. With that, I'd like to say thank you so much to RZ Industries. This is officially the final video in the Jigs and Sleds series of 2016. Now there will be more videos that go into this playlist in 2017 and beyond, but this is the end of the official RZ Industries. Um, so thank you so much to them. Um, they allowed me a lot of creativity. They were very kind and of course I absolutely love both of my masks. You see me using them in pretty much every single build video and that's because I truly do um, have a lot of respect for personal protective equipment. Anything you can do to protect yourself now so you don't have any sort of lung complications, uh, you know, when I'm 80 years old, um, the more, more protection the better as far as I'm concerned. 
and they're so comfortable. So thank you, RZ Industries, for making a terrific product and for supporting woodworkers like myself and Darbin Orver and uh, April Wilkerson um, and anybody else who uses RZ Industry masks. You're pretty amazing. So with that, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. You're welcome to subscribe. I've got 150 videos. You're bound to like something. There's a Patreon page if you'd like to contribute directly to what you see. You can watch the entire Jigs and Sled playlist here and check out another video you might like. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye!